going. Sorry, it, my computer lagged for a second. Hi, Hello, John. Brian. Hey, Brian. I, I've been trying to think of. Oh, also, Travis is in here. Please, everyone watching, hey. listening, uh, please go accost him and uh, yell at him. Um, he hates friends. Yeah, hates friends. Um, so I've been trying to think of a clever way to, uh, like, a, fir- a first cool line to kick this podcast off with today for about 10 minutes now. And I can't really think of anything. But do you want to know what the official tagline of Bark's root beer is? Go for it. Uh, it's good. And that's what's on the can. Surely they have they have something better than that. No, it just says it's good. And then below that says, says since 1898. That's upsetting. Hey, hey, I that's to... the best no. marketing minds in America can only come up with that. When I when I Google them, their their website tagline is uh, "Barks has bite." Mm, well, that's not what the can Which, says. I mean, I don't mean to kink shame a root beer, but like maybe let's tone that down. Hey, you be nice to the root beer. Thanks for resubbing. Hell yeah. Um, but cool. Let's let's get into some podcasts today. Like I said, uh, Travis is in here. Um, go yell at him on Twitter. But uh, we got a game to talk about, man. A damn good one. Um, oh my gosh. Very satisfying. So I kind of I asked on Twitter um, a couple days ago. I guess yesterday. Um, now that the first game's over, let's revisit the question of what are you excited about and what still has you worried? Because again, it's one game. Uh, our, our co-collaborators on Water Two, please go to Twitter and figure out what I'm referencing. Uh, they love to say small sa- small sample sizes. Um, so it is a very small sample size, uh, but uh, let's let's see what we're you know what has it, it changed anything for you on what you're excited for? Has it changed anything for you on what you're you're kind of worried about? Um, let's 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 see what you have to say. I had to scroll so far to find that tweet. By the way, hey, Twitter's been a bad house for about a week. Yeah, you're not wrong. <clears throat> So you're asking me the question, what am I most excited for? Yeah. Golly, I read everyone else's and I was not prepared to answer it. Like, has, um, it, but has, it, has it changed? Has this one game changed your perspective at all on what excites you and what you're worried about? Because it has for me. I don't think so. I think I'm still excited about the non center forward attacking depth. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong. I like Teal and I really like CJ. Um, I feel like I rate him higher than the average NSC fan does. But Hani is obviously the straw that stirs the drink. And I'm beginning to think that the wingers are like the main components of the drink. Yeah. And then the center forward is just there for like garnish and light flavoring. Are we still speaking of soccer? What what is? I'm trying to make an extended metaphor and it is falling apart. It, It is. It is falling apart. But I see what you're saying. And like. For me, like I'm, I'm right on, right around the same place as you are. Like, not a whole hell of a lot has changed for me, but I am, I am a little, a little more confident. Granted, it's against a depleted NYCFC team, but I'm a little more confident on this team's ability to function without Hani. Um, that being said, when Hani came in, completely fucking changed the game. Looks, I mean, explosive, like. Uh, world beers we we could have scored 10 goals if you had been in the entire game but Mm -hmm. have like leal in the midfield played fantastic like i i loved having leal Leal kind of in that spot and letting fafa and 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 schaffelberg take the wings and like literally like right off the bat the dish that leal did to to schaffelberg that should have been a goal right at the top so clean like the fourth minute like it was stuff like that all fucking game. Like they looked great. Grain of salt though. New York City is supposed to be kind of bad this year, and yes. I expected them to win honestly by another goal or two. Um, but still, like I, I, I was impressed. I don't know about you guys. I was relatively impressed and saw very few mistakes other than the what other than Joe coming off the line when he shouldn't have, and it almost led to a goal. Other yeah, that, that was there comical. was really nothing else that worried me at any point. I don't know that it worried me so much as it was. I was just like, I felt vindicated um, by how dirty of a team NYCFC ended oh, up being. God, yeah. 
uh, Maxime Cheneau, in the event that you ever see this, uh, you're a poor representation of Luxembourg. <laughs> Uh, um, got, guy next to me at the game just dropped into the chat and was like, "Oh, hey, you're the guy next to me at the flag." Yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's the second copy of the flag. What's up, buddy? <clears throat> and um, I saw. I think it was Logan. Logan Elliott tweeted the video of Annabelle's injury. I don't think that was dirty so much as it was unfortunate. I, I don't um, think it was necessarily dirty, but you know, I don't that, think it was clean. Yeah, like. He was holding on to his arm. I don't think he was yeah, malintent there, but he was definitely holding on to his arm. Like yeah. that shit happens. Now, what was dirty was Chano existing on the field. Uh, Hani near the end of the game. I'm trying to remember who it was. I think it was Tom Bogert. He found the video very quickly because he's Tom Bogert, and he said, uh, "It looks like Gary Smith was trying to get a red card on his own." Oh yeah, like Gary was Gary was gonna two foot him, and honestly, that would have been the highlight of the season, match one. Yeah, I I I mean, if you go back and watch that, like, get Gary was about a half second away from throwing a haymaker at Chanel. Like, yeah, on if Hani would not have pushed Chanel, I think that Gary was next in line to do it because he was like running at him. Yeah, completely agree. Um, earlier in chat, we had a. Uh, a lot of a lot of conversation about uh, Schaffelberg and Fafa Pico. Uh, the the name Schaffafa has been coined by <laughs> Uncle Beezy, and I have to say that I love it. Um, but I do have a question for you about uh, fun fan names for players, oh, Brian. Yeah. If you are going to take, let's say, two attackers from this game, Teal and Leal, okay. and combine them into a couple name, what would their name be? Teal. TL, okay, yeah. not, not a uh, Leal. No, that's no, uh, yep. absolutely not. It just sounds like you're mispronouncing Leal. Fair. Nah, TL. Uh, but yeah, okay. So that that has me excited. Ha having Fafa like immediately fit in, uh, <clears throat> have everything seem like it was seamless, right? And even going back and watching it, like th I was never worried about us at all during that game, and. It, that's after a rewatch. I tend to have that feeling when we're doing good. I'm at the stadium and I'm drunk, right? But after a rewatch, and and I, I, it looked good to me. I and you know I'm not I'm not the coach here. The coach is you know Travis isn't here today because he hates us. Mm -hmm. um, hates Fred. Loves bugs though. Big bug guy. Um, but we looked good, dude. Like I, I, the one thing that this team is missing now, and we've said this forever is a dp9 or not even a dp9 a consistent nine like a dp9 would be great having a designated player you know big contract player big name player who's going to put in lots and lots of goals um i would love that but what i would love more is consistency if we can get that i'd i'd be happy because i think uh this is Schaffelberg's year clearly he's he's ever since he got to nashville he's been on a roll like <laughs> There's not been a moment that he's been on the field that he hasn't looked amazing. He fucking is the yeah. majority owner of Club America now. Like, he, he's he's what this team needed. And now you have Fafa on the other side, or as a interchangeable piece for Schaffelberg, that based off of what you know last night's game is a very similar player with more experience. Right? Um, yeah. That's just a nice way of saying he's older, but <gasps> of with more experience and. and Having those two players interchange in and out, having Leal hopefully come into, you know, get into a stride this year, and then Hani continuing to being to be Hani, really all we need is some sort of striker that does something, man. I, I'm going to push back on that a little bit. Um, there's only one ball, and I don't think it's fair to say everyone needs to do everything the best they can all the time. Yeah. So I think a compliment, like with as much wing depth and wing creativity as they clearly prioritize striker just almost seems like a do the work, get in the, get in the spot, score the goal. Yeah. And I mean, Saturday Teal did the work and he got in the right spots, but he was making the passes. He had drifted out wide to unbalance the defense. So, um, personally, I'm not super worried about that. Um, I am still worried about midfield depth. Yeah. And I mean, we saw it with, with 
uh, Godoy going down in the second half once the sub windows were all expired. Like, even if he we had had a sub window and he had to come out, I mean, was had Dax been warming up? Would Anunga come on and just be the the midfield designated fowler? Like, what is what does that look like without the the first choice pairing of Davis and Godoy? No, yeah, for sure. And like, I mean, of course <clears throat> you have Dax, but he's getting older. He's not going to play as much. And and I, I obviously we haven't seen him this season, but there's going to start being a decline at some point, right? Yeah. Um, you have Anunga, who I still think is is a very good player, but is a foul merchant at this point, based off of the last two years. Um, he's the he's the midfield uh, Ethan Zubak. Yeah, uh, like the work I like the work Zubak put in running into everyone that moved on Saturday. That was nice. But I, when it comes to the 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 way the team's currently built, I'm gonna kind of go back. I've said this before. This is the same team, right? And Based off of this last game, and granted, it was not against the best competition, but based off this last game, they seem in very, very similar form, very similar shape with some fast additions and then God incarnate Hani Mukhtar, right? Um, Right. So I expect this team to be good. I expect this team to finish in a playoff spot and be vying for a home playoff game or, I guess, home advantage in the best of three series or wherever the fuck the playoffs are this year. Um, I'm not excited about that. I'm not excited about that either. But you get what what I'm saying, right? So top of the playoff, the teams that make the playoffs. uh, That's what I expect. What, What is left to be seen is if we do anything to get into that next tier of maybe not competing for, you know, uh, supporter shield, but, being in the top two or three teams in, in the East, right? And I I hope and pray, and I've I've been the person to be positive on this show and on Twitter and whatever, saying that like, look, when you get international guys, when when they're coming from from Europe, they're coming in the summer window. If National yeah. SC has sights on someone who's gonna be that guy, it's more than likely not going to happen until he's finished playing in whatever league he's in now. That's probably not going to happen until his contract is done with whatever team he is at now. So, you know, I'm not saying that player exists. I'm not saying they even have their eyes on somebody. But if they do, we all need to be a little bit patient and and realize this team functions pretty damn well how it is. And if we could just get one of our two strikers to be – consistent we will survive as a good playoff team until we can find something that at that point it's up to the front office to do their do their job and find something yeah i i completely agree i also think you know sitting over here one game into a 34 game season it's kind of rough to be screaming about consistency um you know as far as far as we know they're the most consistent team in the league and I mean, I want to think that's one true, but or one, of them. One, it, one more win that one more win than LAFC has. Yeah, so, yeah, get at, at, for a brief moment, um, Walker Zimmerman was tied for the golden boot. So, yeah, who is did someone? No one got a Hattie, right? It's just a couple of guys got two. I think a couple of guys got two. OK. Um, I'm trying to think of more reactions to the game. Um, well, I wasn't okay, worried about look, Jack, but I'm I'm definitely not worried about Jack now. Like he's look, a grown ass man. The power is in his new haircut and facial hair. Like yes, Jack Mayer, and I think I think Joe said this on um, between two posts. Jack Mayer was the first ever rookie to be a rookie for three straight years. Um, <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. But now he has facial hair, so he's no longer a rookie right I, that's that's what it takes yeah joke aside though like he's always been he's always been good right every time he's played for nashville he's always been good mm-hmm. and you know a defender's good at least at defense when you don't really notice them yeah and i didn't really notice jack until i started to um like watch the game and follow like what he was doing Right. And, 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 and he played well and he looks like a man now and he probably drinks twice as much milk as all of us. So, you know, he's he's the so, future. do you think he drinks whole milk or just like twice as many twice as much skim milk? Yes. 
Or does he? He's just doing shots of heavy cream during the day. Oh, don't, don't, don't do that to me. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I'm, a, you know, he he's doing great. But like going going back to the game itself, let's just for a second, kind of still at the beginning of this, touch on the atmosphere because, and, and we're gonna we're gonna do this all year long. But it was it was right. special. It was great, and I was genuinely surprised that really there was only like three to four thousand seats empty <laughs> with all the parking issues there's yeah a, p- somehow people still found parking was it inconvenient hell yeah yes. it took me an hour <laughs> to get out of there but you know people still got there there's still even with all of the issues around parking around the club and all the drama of the past two weeks and whatever and of the off season people still wanted to get to that game people still found a way to get to that game and the team delivered and and gave a show to a lot of first timers. If oh, go, absolutely. If you go look through social media, there was a lot of people saying that that was their first game, mm-hmm. and and the atmosphere was on point. the uh, The team was on point, and I saw I saw a TikTok video earlier today where it was, it was some some influencer that was at the game, and it was when Hami oh, was was walking up to get uh, like led onto the field, and they're like, "What is happening?" Why are we screaming? I'm. I don't know why we're excited, but I'm so excited. Like that, that kind of shit. Those kind of experiences for people to one get an introduction to the to our what we do, who we are, and then to be in a special moment like that is invaluable. And if we keep mm-hmm. having moments like that, these people will come back time and time again. So when um when Meg and I got to the game, we walked up to the supporters gate, and we actually saw some friends of ours from from down here in Rutherford County. And it was their first game. Um, he was there with his son. His son is like seven or eight or whatever. Started yeah. playing soccer recently. And um, that was their first game. So uh, we walked in. I told him some things about the stadium, about the team. And he texted me after the game. And he was like, that was like, as far as a first game, that was amazing. Like, that was an incredible experience. Yeah. And like you were saying, if that was someone's introduction to to the team, to the culture, to the fan base, like... I don't know that it really gets to be better than that because it is a dominant start to finish performance. The crowd was involved. It was electric. There was a villain, right? Oh we got very God. aggressive at booing. We and got on that quick. I'm, I'm I was so, so proud. I'm so proud of the fans for staying with that bit for 90 minutes. Well, it really kicked off around like the 30th minute, but from then on, for the rest of the game, it was instant. I mean, the entire stadium kept up with the bit. And if you go back and rewatch the game and you you watch Janot, when that started, he started making mental mistake after mental mistake after mental mistake. There is one moment where he gets the ball and he's getting booed and he passes the ball directly to Jacob Schaffelberg. And then Schaffelberg like runs at him, chips him, gets past him, and then I think either gets fouled or it creates a chance. I can't remember how it ends, but the crowd reaction is priceless because it's like he touches the ball, cascading boos, and then he passes the ball directly to Jacob Schaffelberg, and it's just cascading. Yeah! Like, everyone's just, like, immediately stoked that this man fucked up. Like, yep. I, I I hope he's still thinking about it because he was he was a little <laughs> floppy boy the entire <laughs> game, and I hope it hurt his feelings. I Yeah, I agree. Uh, Fox broadcast went on and on about how they did. Yeah. No, oh, and I, I didn't see the Fox broadcast, but I saw the replay on Apple TV and they went on, on, on and on about it. Like there was multiple times after it started where he got the ball and the commentators would just go, guess who has the ball? You know, like, <laughs> like <laughs> that's amazing. I haven't heard that. Yeah. Like it's awesome. Right. And, and Nashville outside of Nashville, SC Nashville's fa- like sports fans in general, have always done that. Like look back at cell block three Oh three um, for the Preds. They always did shit like that with like uh, Mike Madonna and uh, uh, Chris Chelios on the, on the red wings. Like there was, a, we always, some, for some reason we always create these villains and then just let them have it like relentlessly at every national sporting event I go to like more so than anywhere else. It's crazy. And I love it. And then, and then like throw, you, you, you have that and then you sprinkle in the goalie chance on top of it. I mean, if there's one thing Nashville's good at, it's being mean to professional athletes. 
I think the I think the goalie chant is probably the thing that was most disappointing uh, for me personally on Saturday because I was not invested enough to learn that motherfucker's name. Uh, he's not even supposed. And that's another thing. That goalie isn't really the guy for them. It's the it's the other goalie that they just yeah. recently signed, right? For a, a good chunk of I think cash. So. Um, Sorry, I'm I'm gonna taunt J Mark real quick. <laughs> taunt taunting taunting people. What could you? What oh, could you mean? Gross. Get that out of here. What could you? <laughs> uh, for those listening to the audio podcast, he pulled out a uh, a, uh, a a Pittsburgh a Penguins, Penguins hat. hat. Also, for those listening to the audio podcast, we stream live on Twitch and record this podcast live on Twitch every Monday at eight. Please jump in, be a part of the chat. You can contribute to the show. You can make fun of me, um, and it supports us whatever platform you listen on. But Twitch supports us a little more directly. Um, so either way, thank you a ton. But uh, yeah, going back to the game, like the the atmosphere is insane, and, and I know, I know, guys, I know, I know, I know, fans. For the past week, we're saying like, oh, the back line needs to get new chance. The back line needs to get you know new songs. Blah blah blah. blah. I get it, guys. I get, I get it. I understand it. But what we, what the back line does do, the songs they do sing, say it, they oh, do do. Gosh, we're so close. There they, we go. They do so incredibly well. And and it, I I get it. Like I want it too. Like I there's there's a Paramore song, Brick by Boring Brick, that has like the perfect chant ending that I want to be done so bad. But like it, it'll happen eventually. We just gotta keep it, it'll happen, I swear to you. Cause like every year there's new new shit added in. It's just slow and gradual. But dude, it was so fucking loud and so beautiful and everyone was involved and I I don't know. It's just good to be back. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep up with chat. We've reintroduced <laughs> uh, cake is bread. Cake is not bread. I think uh, so, that is going to be a, a separate, yeah, we uh, chatted about long, this. long form episode. God damn it! Uh, okay, so we chat about chatted about this before <laughs> we went live because I said it on the last podcast. I had like ten people come up to me on game day and and yell at me about cake is not bread. <laughs> it fucking is. Um, I I I, oh my I think I commented it under Club and Country's like mailbag tweet um i we will do a whole nother in this same rss feed on the same channel but a whole nother um cake is bread uh debate like supplemental podcast um and i will go fucking nuts i'll collect my thoughts which i'm bad at i will collect my thoughts into a presentation as to why you're all wrong and i'm right i know it's hard being so right all the time but i am <laughs> and brad's gonna uh, make a powerpoint i'm dude i'm gonna do more than that can you make a sandwich with cake hell yes you can make a sandwich you can with make cake. a what sandwich you... with anything you want man oh my gosh cake is bread you can't change my mind anyway um and atmosphere was dope um oh it's, it's absolutely one lasagna yeah um atmosphere was dope they balled out on the field uh what else are we what else are we reacting to? Parking was meh. Parking was got meh. cold. It got cold as hell. Dude, I was not I, anticipating that. It, it, I mean, I was in the supporter section going nuts. So like, you know, I, I was warm. Um, I kind of like the, the cold Geodas vibe. I don't know. I, every time I was there last year, I was sweating my nuts off. So I, I kind of like, you know, a little, a little, a little nip in the air. I'm here for oh, it. Mo moment of silence for Brian's nuts. Yeah. Well, no, that's not until it gets hot again they're gone you sweat them off they're oh, no longer fair. with us that's fair that's fair that's fair that's fair uh but yeah so i mean there, as for the game there's not much to say other than at least in my opinion that we played well right i, I when honey came on it changed the game we, i like we played well up until honey came on we came out a little flat in the second half um but again i wasn't really scared at any point we just yep. seemed kind of flat, and it, seemed, it it kind of felt like the game was just gonna kind of level out to a one zero win, and then Hani came on, and one the energy the crowd picked up, it, it sounded like we had just scored a goal. How loud the fucking uh, stadium got when he just stood up and walked over to get subbed on, but yep, uh, when he came on the field, I mean the respect that this man has to to get from defenders is insane. There is a photo of Lionel Messi being surrounded 
by four defenders, uh, and Hani just fucking recreated it. Like mm-hmm. it, he, that goal was entirely because if they didn't all step to Hani, he was gonna rip it into the upper corner, and they fucking knew it. Yep. And uh, they they stepped to Hani, and he dished it off. I mean, th- the dude is insane. Because a, n- a normal player in that exact play in that exact situation would have either forced a shot or rush the pass to Jacob Schaffelberg. Jacob Schaffelberg was offside. I don't know if you've gone back and rewatched this. He was either offside or very close and had to backtrack. And Hani looked up, made eye contact, did a couple step overs to draw the people back in, and then passed it over. Any other player on our team in the league, I mean, with a few exceptions, would have just ripped a shot and maybe scored or made a pass that was most definitely offside. And and this dude just just manhandled four other grown professional football players and and dished it off to Schaffelberg for the easy goal. Insane. Not, not only manhandled four professional soccer players, he had already like skated past two other ones in his run. Yeah. Which was really his first run with the ball of the game. I think he had made some other runs, but he hadn't really done anything with them. So that w- I would say that was his first true involvement. It was completely <laughs> like Lobo would have missed the layup. Sorry, I'm looking at, at chat. I mean, Schaffelberg missed a layup earlier in the game. So uh, if you're coming, like, I don't feel like that's a fair comparison. Um, I mean, that was Hani's first chance with the ball, and. <laughs> Hey, if you look like hey. what is that what would that be like to a per 90 he creates like a chance every five minutes Dude, i know it, that's unsustainable but like that's the impact he has on this team de- i mean it i don't know it's it may have just been the magic of the moment and like how crazy the atmosphere got and that you have the best player in the league hey hold on my dogs are pulling my mic up my hand hey go john talk uh, I mean, it definitely is the impact you see um, being able to bring the best player in the league off the bench. And I mean, I know that's something that we that we were afraid of. You know, okay. if Hani doesn't start, what are we going to be like? And then, I mean, you talked about it earlier. Randall played just a great game as the as the set in the Hani role, I guess. I don't really know. It doesn't really feel like a true second striker because a second striker to me doesn't. They're not as active defensively. Yeah. And obviously this is a Gary Smith system, so everybody's active defensively. Um, but I would I would be curious to see what their heat maps are to see who was where. Um, because I bet there are folks who are pretty much every blade of grass, they covered that field. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, I don't know. I just I just know I just know that there there's very few players I've seen in in sport at least in the city of Nashville. And I, I, I had a tweet about this the other day that Gardner as much respect on the field and off the field as Hani Mukhtar. I, mm-hmm. I, and I know the, the, the old, old folks, the, the boomers and be like, Oh, I've never heard of this guy. I've had a couple of my mentions already, but <laughs> there's, there's dogs. Hey, stop fighting. they sorry. Sorry. The audio listeners. Um, there, there is very few people like that in Nashville sports history. There's Steve McNair, Eddie George, Derrick Henry, Pekka Rene, Hani Mukhtar. And yes, there's others like Frank Wycheck, Philip Forsberg, whatever, that were very well respected. But I'm talking like literal, like, like God tier status, like, like insane amount of respect on the field and off the field within, within Nashville, yeah. you know, would you have, I feel like I would want to put Shay in that conversation as like a Preds adjacent person. Yeah, but he left. I don't know that he wanted to. That doesn't mean he didn't leave. Oh, I know. If he would have stayed, yeah. And it's not his fault. But if he Right. It, but he he left when he was still, you know, a very good player. Healthy. Um and still at his peak, right? Like Eddie George left and would, you know, kind of fell off and 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 um but I know, I know I know Steve McNair went to Baltimore, but it, again, every player, excuse me, Steve McNair and Eddie George left and then kind of declined, right? Um, and then, you know, we still have Derrick Henry. But all I'm saying, all I'm saying is I feel like Hani Mukhtar is 
he deserves and is now at that level in Nashville um, of a, a very, 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 very special player, a very elite player. And we're going to look back at the start of this franchise in 10, 15, 20 years and be like, how the hell did we get a player like that right off the bat? Yeah, I think that's completely fair. I'm trying, like, what would it... I'm trying to emotionally prepare for, like, life after Hani in X amount of years whenever that happens. What would it take for somebody to reach his level as quickly as he has, short of, like, being MVP, being I that le- like, having that level of influence... It's it's gonna be hard to to see another player get to that point in, in any time soon for this team, um, unless we go sign like a, a superstar from Europe. Who knows? But which I I don't think that's in this front office's yeah. bag. No, I don't think it is either. That is that is a club that they left at home. Okay, so uh, let's pivot a little bit. Um, All right. So obviously, MLS is not the the best league in the world right it's it's, it's how dare you know, sir in talent but it's 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 rising it's getting there like mm. you got team you got players that are, are going to europe for huge amounts of money we're no longer a retirement league we're a seller's league um we're producing this great young talent we have great okay. young talent like hani mukhtar and uh jerusalem adam Stibich, really right, wants right. to be hani mukhtar um, I, you know, we, we, the league's on the come up. We're not talking about on the field. We're talking about in the stands. When are we going to have to, uh, you know, you know, as a soccer community start to recognize the MLS as one of the stronger fan leagues in the world, at least the top half of the fan, uh, top half of the teams, because, Atlanta and Charlotte are going to have two of the highest um, attendances, attendances in the world. Yeah, they just well, are. Seattle. It's well, Seattle, eh, Seattle like forty five k. That's still up there. That is still way as you know. Fuck, Nashville SC is going to have higher attendance than a lot of Premier League teams, bottom half Premier League teams, but a lot of Premier League teams. Like, right. if you start looking at the teams that are really hitting in MLS, the teams that are really in their stride. And I'm not even just talking about on the field. I'm talking about in the stands, right? We're going to have to, at some point, start to acknowledge. W- when does the world start to acknowledge that, Na- that, not Nashville, but I guess by proxy Nashville, MLS is is a legitimate real league? Because I, it's just not, it's not happening. I see nothing but people clowning on it, and you can clearly tell they've never watched a single game. I think that's what it takes, um, honestly, because – what I feel like people struggle with is having loud opinions on things they don't understand Mm -hmm. and social media. When you can hide behind, I'm going to say it, the average anime profile picture. Correction. Then you can, you can have that loud opinion and you have the, you're, you're insulated from any type of response to it. But I think it, it was a, it was some European guy. He went to an Orlando game last year and he was like, this is my first MLS experience. I want to see what this is all about. And he was like, this isn't the, this is an incredible experience. Like from the, from the tailgating to anything after the game that is, it is a top tier fan experience. Yeah. And I think that's what it takes. You know, I think it would take, an Apple documentary on like a day in the life of a notable fan during a game. Wait, uh, MLS needs a Wrexham, like not team yeah. documentary, right? Yeah. And, and I think, I think this Apple deal that kicked off this weekend can potentially do that. I saw an article that Apple had record signups this weekend. Now is that, you know, uh, a temporary thing? Or, or are they counting, you know, free signups from T-Mobile deals and stuff like that? I don't know. I would expect that's part of it. That's yeah, probably part of it. But the fact that they had record signups and even if it's free temporary signups, they had a record amount of people tuning in to watch MLS this weekend um, is is a step in the right direction and can only be seen as a good sign. Um, 
it's it's just annoying a- as a a I would I wouldn't say I'm an MLS sicko cuz I, I but I'm I'm definitely a Nashville SC sicko like yep, you give me same. any amount of of content around Nashville Soccer Club and I will consume it um I I am a fucking diehard and it is very annoying to me when I look at record attendances record relevance record you know uh money coming into the league uh you know tv deals uh adidas jersey deal which just got renewed which you can say whatever you want which about i adidas, hate but that is I hate like, it. I, you can say whatever you want about adidas but it is a huge sum of money it is mm-hmm. and, yeah. and you can see everything this building up to the crescendo of this world cup coming up and nothing but positive signs as a league and as as a team when it comes to fan culture or whatever and like we have our gripes but nothing but positive signs and then you get attacked from both sides you get the boomers who are constantly in my fucking mention saying oh i don't know who honey Mukhtar is i've never heard of nashville let's see what's a soccer he said communist kickball <laughs> <laughs> oh you know? not the uh, bring back the elmo yeah, we need the elmo bring back the elmo and then you get it from the other side from the Euro snobs that say MLS isn't a serious league, trash league. I've seen more passion at my like at my you know U10 whatever cousins tournament. Blah 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 blah. When all I'm seeing, even when I look at teams I hate, fuck Atlanta, fuck them. I do not like Atlanta, but goddamn they do things right there. Like they are constantly getting huge attendances. I don't have anything against Charlotte yet. I probably will this season. But say we'll give it time. They're constantly yeah. getting good attendances. Like Seattle, uh, I hate them. Constantly getting good attendances, although they were down this past weekend. Portland, I love them. You know, whatever. You look at all these cities that are doing this thing right, and in if you pick up any one of these teams and you place them in Germany, right? they would be renowned as like, oh, their atmosphere is so great. They they do things right. They fill up their stadium. They have all this pa- all these passionate fans. But because yeah. it's an MLS, it's it's viewed as, you know, a shit product, a not serious league. And people bring up promotion relegation, which sure you can talk about that all you want, but let's talk about the fans in the stands. Let's not talk about the weird bullshit system that the leagues are in. Let's talk about the actual passion yeah. for the team. The reason we go to the game, like I, I it I don't know it I really I just brought this up because I wanted to rant because I've seen I've gotten nothing but <laughs> shit from both sides for two months and then I get to the game and there's thirty thousand people you know like I don't know yeah I I think it's just lack of exposure genuinely I think you I think you're completely spot on when you said if you could just like pick up one of those one of those high tier environment stadiums and just transplant it to any one of those top european leagues i think it's one of the like i think it's like a burger king commercial or something where they take these people and they're like a a gourmet dining experience and and they're just like oh yeah this is this is really good. And then the the king sneaks into the background and he's like, ah, just kidding. It's the the Whopper 3000. Like, <laughs> I think that's kind of what it would take. I think it uh, would take, like, introducing someone and just not kidnapping them because I would never condone that, but, like, forcing someone to actually give something a chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then H-Man said in chat, um, if, you, if you share the stories, people will be interested, which... Hopefully, Apple's starting to do. Um, and, you know, again, with record signups and, and all the content, like, until this week, I had no idea that, like, New York City or NYCFC had Pigeon Man. But I'm like, oh, that's a cool little cultural thing that they have at this team. And, like, I, there, there's li- little shit like that shared over time. Um, yeah. Well, Obviously, like I'm never gonna be interested in New York City FC, but I think Fuck stuff em. like that's cool. I think stuff like like I want to learn more about each of these teams and their backgrounds and whatever. And uh, we can point back to that flag right there with the 2013 on it, and be like, hey, there's a cool story right there you can talk about on Apple TV or any other thing to get people interested in Nashville SC. Bring you know the original founders of the team 
excuse me, founders and fans of the team, bring in Soccer Moses, bring in Ron Deal, who used to work for the team and volunteered for the uh, amateur team, and build a story around it, and it'll it'll start to get that relevance. Like, hell, I remember back in the early days of Nashville SC, FC, we, they had conversations with uh, uh, Portsmouth in England because it was set up, it tried to be set up in a very similar way, right? And there was, at the first couple games, there was a Portsmouth flag that was sent from England as like a, a show of support, right? Of like, hey, we like what you're doing. And and like, you can talk about these little stories along the way. And and up to this point, we have it. And, and, and hopefully with this new deal, stuff like that can start to give the league a little more relevance outside of the pockets of... of very passionate fans yeah i realize part of my like investment in this is i mean being a part of or not being a part of the team feeling like i'm a part of something with nashville sc but the lack of storytelling when they have one of the most compelling stories in american soccer like that has to be a legal thing yeah. Like that has to be a we lost the rights to talk about that and we will get like cease and desisted by some person who has way less money than MLS. Like yeah. it shouldn't matter. It, but it, all I know is there's a legal thing with the logo going into USL and that's all I know. Um, okay. But th- again, that hasn't stopped them from talking about. They've already talked about the fact that the amateur team existed, the fact that USL existed. Um, and yeah. welcome to the, the weekly topic of Brian being mad about not, uh, <laughs> referencing, you know, the NPSL and USL days. Um, every, every week. I don't know, man. I, I really, I just wanted to rant because I see this league doing, even since we came in, I, I see, I see this league doing fan fucking tastic, like leaps and bounds better than they were. And, and since I, like, I started following MLS back in 2013 when I was following the Timbers or 20, yeah, 2013 when I was following the Timbers. Gross. And even since, like, since then it's night and day different. Mm -hmm. Dude, I don't know. It. It's, it's very fun. And you, you mentioned this earlier. The, the common perception of MLS had been, it's a retirement league. It's you know, its own skill tier and a skill would have been used very loosely, but the pace of the league is so fast. It's so physical and it, it, it truly is development. And there's so much excitement that comes with that. Like if you look at, um, I know Leeds is a big thing for American soccer fans because they had, they had Jesse Marsh, but they have three should be starting American internationals and they have three players who started their careers really in MLS. Yeah. If not, if not under MLS, cause Jack Harrison went to wake forest. Tyler Adams, I think started with red bulls too. And Brendan Aronson played at Bethlehem steel. Yeah. And I mean, I if you count Weston, USC Weston McKinney in, uh, in USL, by the way, did he really? Yeah. That's wild. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Doesn't he have a brother? It may may have been his brother. Uh, Paxton is definitely too young to have played it, it in against Nashville in USL. I'm, I am uh, someone tweet at Clay. I'm like ninety five percent sure he played, <laughs> um, against Nashville I'll in just Nashville look. at some point. Bethlehem Steel. That sounds right. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I don't want to go on for this for too long. It just I wanted to bitch and moan about it because that's what I do here. Yeah, I do think I part of me does think for us as creators, like at what point do we just have to do that? Do what? Create oh, just, the content we want the club to make. That's what we're doing. I mean, that's it's why we. Jeez, you just like turn into a. Sorry, audio listeners, you won't know what happened, but I turned into a turned ghost. Into a ghost, yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's a I have if there's a web page that I can have on dark mode, uh, I have it on dark mode. <laughs> the USL championship website does not have that option. So I turned into a ghost. Got it. Oh, it's um, so bad. I forgot what I was saying. I, I don't know. 
But I was thinking like, oh yeah, would, no, that's what. That, so you, you yes, the uh, Nashville SC MLS. But we're gonna talk about Nashville SC here. Nashville SC creators podcast. Uh, fuck, if you just have a Twitter that gets a lot of engagement, what, Travis. Travis. Uh, we just need to tell these stories ourselves and, and kind of yeah. band together. Uh, the, the throwback, to throwback the thing. But there we go band together and, and and tell these stories ourselves and really force this knowledge out there, and then eventually force the club to acknowledge it, force Apple TV and the club to do some sort of story on it. Like we just we have to tell the stories ourselves and and keep tradition alive and also tell stories that are happening in the stands that the normal fan wouldn't know. Like, for example, Travis had to eat a second bug this past weekend, completely unplanned. Uh, Tempo just brought him a bug on a platter. <laughs> I lost my shit, dude. Uh, and if you're not, if you're a Houston fan, you have no idea what that means. But uh, not even I, I not even a platter. He brought a full on charcuterie board with like crackers and sausage and cheese and bugs. I, I don't care what I do for the rest of my life. <laughs> my crowning achievement is that I bullied my favorite soccer team into feeding one of my friends a bug. And and it makes me And then they so did it happy. again. And then they did it a second time without me bullying them to do it. And now it's just something we have to do. It's it, a, it's got to be an annual tradition. It's got to be this point. it's got to be the first game of the year every single year. Yeah, when, when's Apple TV going to do one of the ritual episodes on Travis eating a bug? <laughs> Lori would kill him. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Uh, that would be the. I I assume it's like a, like a thirty for thirty almost, but like a ten minute one. Yeah, and it's about Travis eating a bug. I'm just trying to envision like the interview with you, and they're like, "How did this happen?" And I was like, "Well, he said something stupid on social media, so I said you're gonna eat a bug." H and then he did. H man said in chat on Twitch, "I was on the other side of the supporter section." And saw uh, the mascot handler with a sign saying Travis slash eat a bug. And then Tempo following behind with the whole ass tray. That, yep. I, so I didn't see it happen. I was just told secondhand. But uh, yeah, it just it, make, I, it makes my heart happy that neither time was it set up by me. But I spoke it into existence. Yes. Oh, man. Uh, musical guests seem surprisingly weak for Nashville. Sit, eh, it was it was all Johnny Cash theme. It was his family. That's yeah. Oh, that was definitely it. leaning into the Man in Black match. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think the, I would. Uh, the what's it called? The rift at the beginning was very good, but it's fine. Uh, it's better than I could do because I can't play guitar, and that's I, where I tend to have yes. my. That's where I have my threshold on judging things. Is can I do better? No, keep my mouth shut. Yeah. So, oh, man. Okay. Speaking of the the man in black match, I was yeah. very impressed at how the blackout actually went much better than I thought it would. Yeah, without them having to give away t-shirts or anything. I think yeah. what probably helped with that is that it was cold and everyone had completely agree jackets that are black, right? So you probably probably showed up in a black jacket on accident. Um, but I mean, I saw a good amount of people wearing those Johnny Cash jerseys and t-shirts and hats and scarves and whatever. And if Adidas doesn't give us a third jersey for how many fucking jerseys we've sold, I will be shocked because they can't keep them in stock. They're flying yeah. off the shelves. So much so that Amari, the producer for a uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, soccer podcast. Bl hashtag blame Amari. Hashtag blame Amari put on his Instagram story today that they didn't even, pr they did. They're in such a rush to get these out. They didn't even press the numbers onto his shirt that they were just in the bag. <laughs> that they forgot, <laughs> no shot. They forgot to press the numbers in the name on the back of his shirt. And it was just kind of like taped I to, see that. to the, the, the Jersey. Like they, they are overwhelmed and it's, not a bad thing, but I mean, it's bad for Omari, but it's, it's, I mean, we better fucking get a third jersey and it better be MPSL themed. D that yes, was my, right. that was my question was what would you want it to be? But that's a stupid question because yeah. I know you, you know me, I um, want it to be that, but cooler. okay. But if it, but if it's not that, uh, Dolly what would Parton, it be? Dolly Parton and have it be, uh, like 
connected to her charity in some way. I don't know that Dolly has an iconic look other than big hair and uh, balanced, challenging dimensions. It's, it's it's just her face on the front. <laughs> That's terrifying. Yeah. It's, just it's a bunch just of big old, just some from, sweaty men wearing Dolly Parton's face down. It's just Dolly Parton's face. Oh gosh. But with like Mona Lisa eyes where she's always following oh, you. Of course, of course, of course. If we have to. What if a supporter group dropped a retro theme Jersey again, it's been done not by a supporter group, but there was a group of people in one of my group chats that you dude, if you just, if you, you can go on Admiral right now and make the Jersey. <laughs> Just get the basic striped jersey from Admiral, and you can make the jersey that the team wore in 2013 right now. Nash North with the idea. Big cleavage. What if we just had, like, a really deep V? Oh. <laughs> not not printed on. An actual deep an V. An actual, like, we'll a super the, deep V we'll of a soccer jersey. the first team in the world to have a deep V soccer jersey. That would be something. Right. It would be a jersey, but I don't know. I I I am I I am pleased with the weekend. I am happy overall. A lot of my worries were kind of uh, you know calmed a little bit. Uh, obviously, I'm still worried going forward about you know production, like who's going to score. One game is not big enough of a sample size, but I was happy with what I saw on the field, off the field. We'll move on to predictions for NY or New York Red Bull. Who's gonna win? What's the score? What you feeling? Um, I so I I bemoaned on Twitter uh, the fact that we don't have the fifteen minute highlight videos anymore. We have seven minute highlight videos now for every game, and right. I feel like seven minutes isn't a full chance to get a grasp on a game. Um. That said, away at Red Bulls always seems tricky. Yep. And I I don't think it's a loss because I think Nashville can keep up. You know, away at Red Bulls, you want to play them early in the season. Yep. So, I mean, second game is almost as early as it can get. I think I'm going to say a 2-1 win. Okay. But it is 1-1 for an extended period of time, and then Nashville scores late again. Yeah. Okay, so very similar thought process for me. Um, I I'm gonna assume Hani Mukhtar starts. If for whatever reason Hani Mukhtar comes off the bench again, it's gonna be a draw. It's going to be okay. a zero zero or a one one draw. Um, if Hani Mukhtar starts and is subbed off at any point, it will be a draw. It'll be a 1-1 one, one draw. Um, if Hani Mukhtar stays on for a full 90, we will win by one goal. It'll be 1-0 or 2-1. I'm going to make my official guess 2-1. Okay. So we are we are making the same prediction. Yeah. So 2-1 is what I think is going to happen, given that Hani Mukhtar starts and plays a full 90. If he gets subbed off or he doesn't start, it'll be a draw, either 1-1 one, one or 0-0. Zero, zero. What was what I think I hear? I think I hear Travis's prediction. Um, that he hates he friends thinks and isn't he here. hates friends isn't here. Um, he thinks Red Bulls are gonna win three to one. Mm, Travis, how could one you? Red Bull fan, uh, Travis. Wow, hate hates friends, hates Nashville. Uh, arguably more than Ben Wright, and Ben Wright hates Nashville. So, <laughs> oh shit. Okay, that that's it. That's all I got for today. John, do you got anything else, man? I think that about does it for me. I mean, we, we're right about at an hour, so we usually cut off around here. Do, uh, do we want to do a do we want to do a quick chat mailbag with instant reaction? No time to no time to think about yeah, questions. Just drop anything your heart desires in Twitch chat, and we will read it aloud. Um, a moment of silence for Kip Keller. Oh my gosh, <laughs> R.I.P. Uh, well, while, he, th- while he threw so his hometown is, is team could win about stuff to read. Uh, let me do just a little PSA like I've been doing. Uh, you guys are badasses. Uh, we've gotten so many fucking follows on Twitter. I think we're at like 15 or so reviews on Spotify and like 10 on Apple. Um, I, I mean, 
keep doing what you're doing. Share this podcast with somebody. If you have the same weird sense of humor as we do, or you just like what we have to say, share this podcast with your other NSC friends. Uh, you know, I want I want this to be more of a thing last this year. Last year it was fun. Uh, we did the streams. It was just like this, but the audio segment of it has kind of transformed what we're doing here and and brought more legitimacy, more people in. Started a conversation with more people that weren't there before. Um, so again, appreciate you guys. Please go rate on uh, Apple or Spotify five stars. Um, I think I said if those two combined get to a hundred, I will also eat a bug. Um, so and and you don't get to pick the bug. I get to pick the bug. It will be a bug though, and it cannot <laughs> be alive. I you, uh, you, temp- you little, tempo gets to pick the bug. You little freaks will have been saying like, "Oh, Brian's gonna eat five bugs. It's gonna be alive. It's gonna be a tarantula." No, stop. No, stop you're gonna it. eat chikatana ants. We stop all know this. It. No, I pick the bug. Dead bug. Brian, you're gonna eat chikatana ants. Is what it's gonna be. Um, let's see who is player who is player of the week. Player of the week. Um, my heart said my heart will always say Hani Mukhtar, but I'm gonna exclude okay. that because that's just what I always say. Schaffelberg, man. Yeah, completely he's, in. He's coming into his own. He's he's happy here in Nashville. He kissed the crest after his goal no less than forty five times. Uh, it. The dude, forty six, forty six. I think he did it again. Yeah, the dude, um, the dude loves Nashville. He he got a mullet for Christ's sake. Like <laughs> the dude loves Nashville. And it's glorious. He belongs here, and he better never leave. I don't care how much your like Nashville SC is offered. Le- keep him. Um, yeah. I mean that's it. That's got to be that's got to be the the player of the week for me. There's no other option for me other than Honey Mutar, yeah. who's always completely on board. Um. Has the croc agenda slowed down? Uh, Chase, you're downstairs. Shut the fuck up. Uh, it's it's not that the croc agenda has slowed so much as it is people who wear tennis shoes just outpaced them. So here's what happened. No, stop it, you. Here's what this last game because I <laughs> not not every I saw some crocs, but not as many people as normal. Uh, it was wet outside. I wore crocs and my little sockies got wet. Um, not comfortable. Uh, it was a blackout game. A lot of people just wore tennis shoes or black shoes to that, and it was yeah. kind of cold. Uh, let summer hit, where you need that airflow and that aerodynamic, um, you know, the the aerodynamic form of the croc, uh, and it will it will come back. It's it's never leaving. Uh, it, fuck, there's a banner down in the corner that says "Croc Block." It's never leaving. There's also a Nepali flag and a flag for the Seychelles. So don't ask too many questions. I, I asked why the Nepali flag, and <laughs> the response I got was, "It's cool." So, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, should we make black an official team color? No, no. In my in my opinion, no. But I do like the idea of either alternating back and forth between having a black like jersey and having the the navy jersey, or any time we're allowed to have a third kit, go with the the Johnny Cash Man in Black third kit because. It is a hit. It's what it is. It's it's just it's just good. How did you like I don't know how you can make it better. Like this almost seems like it has to be a one off for now. It 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 should be okay. I mean, yeah. Maybe they well, because they're gonna have to run with it for two years, right? Mm-hmm. Because the next that one is, that, that is my understanding the of the next Adidas one deal. that's gonna get changed is the home jersey and then, next year and then the year after that, the secondary jersey gets changed again, right? So have it as a two-year thing, and then just two years on, two years off, right? And nostalgia is a crazy thing. If we do, if mm-hmm. one, this game was outstanding, the experience was outstanding. But if we play well in these jerseys for the next two years, it's gonna be like the mustard cat jerseys from uh from the Preds. Like the mustard cat jerseys were ugly, but boy do I fucking love them because they have like a nostalgia spot in my heart. And when they brought right. it back, I was so happy. Um, so I could see that same sort of thing happening with a Johnny Cash jersey, except it's an actual, like, good-looking jersey. Uh, this one's actually really hard for me. If Hani starts, who sits? I Because I don't, I don't think it's Randall. I just don't know if I... I think... I think Fafa, it's, it's either Fafa or Schaffelberg that has to sit. I think it's Fafa, because he... So they both came off... Right. Yeah, and I think Schaffelberg played his way into that starting spot. I think they both they both played well enough to be 
excuse me, a starter, but Schaffelberg played his ass off. And is, well, he he and did, and then National Soundcheck Player of the Week, which is like he, uh, it's Gary true. Smith is watching this right now, and he's like, "Fuck, I got to write his name and pin." It's it's the highest praise uh, any Nashville State player could hope or or dream of. Um, but also didn't. Sorry, go ahead. Didn't Fafa come off with a knock too? Uh, I mean, everyone got kind of beat up during that game. No, you're, was, you're not wrong. Um, but like the teal honey up top. I, I love that. <laughs> I don't necessarily yeah. think yeah. that either Fafa or Schaffelberg sitting is necessarily a bad thing because they're both speed merchants. That's what they are. They're fucking fast. And you that allows you to have one run themselves to death for 50 minutes, 60 minutes, yeah. come off, and then you have the same speed against a left back or a right back that is dying. Like, uh, you know, so I don't even necessarily think it's a bad thing. Um, while I think I, it's an excellent problem to have. Yeah, and I, I loved having them both on the field, and I want to see that multiple times this year, but not at the cost of not having Hani Mukhtar out there. Or, the, I mean, or benching Randall. Like, I don't think Randall played really well, and I think putting him on the bench to start Hani in the second game is not the signal that I want Gary to make. No. So I, I I think Fafa probably sits, um, and then the next game Schaffelberg probably sits and Fafa starts, and you have that kind of alternate back and forth. Um, and when you need speed, they could they they could just sub off Leal and put in you know put in Fafa and have them both on the field, right? Or they could put Fafa, who has experience playing striker, up at the top. He's not the stere- you know st- stereotypical. Uh, he's not a Gary Smith Gary nine Smith striker, but when you when you need that speed, when you need a, a something, you need to change it up. Fafa has experience playing striker. You put him up top. You keep Randall Lee all in. You keep Schaffelberg in. You have Hani Mukhtar right behind him. It it's a different look, right? And you have all those yeah. dangerous players that we all like to see on the field on the field at once. Yeah, I think the more interesting question is, do you think Adoy starts on Saturday? Uh, depends on how his boo boo's healing up. I thought he, I thought he dislocated his shoulder at first. I think that's what he did. Well, at, when he stood up, it was like kind of drooped down. But by the like by the time the game was over and he was walking around, it was fine. So maybe they just like popped it back in or something. I mean, it was it was not fine. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw him. Um, any time after he got off the field, but like. When even so during the game when he was running around, that arm was stationary. It yeah. was not moving. Yeah. And I feel like even even in post game revelry, right? That arm was not moving. So I think I do think he dislocated his shoulder. Um I say that with having uh no medical awareness other than my wife loves watching Grey's Anatomy. So you know, take that for, for what it's worth. <laughs> Everyone's saying it was not fine. Okay, fine. I saw the man run. <laughs> By fine, I mean not not like career season-ending injury. No, no, not at all. Um, I, I don't think it's that. But I also think, like, we we all know Anibal Godoy is, is tough, right? We all know that yeah. about him. He's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. For playing, like, 10 minutes with a just popped back in shoulder. Yeah. And he wasn't like shy about anything. He was still running around the field as well as he could. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, Jay Moss is saying adrenaline is a hell of a drug. You are not wrong. <laughs> um, so I, I'm curious to see if he starts Saturday or if they say, we're going to go ahead and get on the rotation. Sean Davis is starting with Dax and expect Anunga to come in sometime in the second half. Yeah. I guess that's more what I would anticipate, especially against the Red Bulls, where if your midfield isn't up to 100%, then a mistake will happen at some point during that game. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know. I I think he will be okay. It, it, if he's not in this game, it's obviously precautionary and probably the right move. Um, but the fact that they allowed him to go on and play 10 more minutes um, shows me that it's not that serious. Like, yeah, he, he fucked himself up, like, 
he got an injury there, but I don't think he'll be out for more than a couple games. Yeah, I agree. And and this is me hoping I don't eat my words. The X dog <laughs> uh, stat was through the, through the woof, through the woof, yeah. Yeah, through the woof. And, yeah, no, I I love that, and I'm upset that I didn't say that yeah. uh, when I tweeted about his ex dog on Saturday. Um, do we miss any other any other questions or anything that came into the the Twitch chat? Um, more more Crocslander, love that. No. More uh, clean, clean sheet. No love for Joe. Uh, we were playing a team that has no attackers except for Talis Magno. Joe made a couple good saves. Oh, so, oh, he made good saves, but but I expected him to. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I request that Brian not wear his hat forward again like last week. We are uh, clearly a hat backwards uh, podcast, Take except that. for Travis who hates friends. Yep, yeah. and this is fact. Uh, we would never lie to you. Ever we uh, we are uh, we know ball. Uh, Travis does not know ball because he's not here. Um, so it's just it's just what it is, man. Uh, cool. All right, let's wrap it up here. We're past an hour. Um, again, thank you guys for uh, for listening for watching. Um, we are on a roll here at the sound check lately. Um, so uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Retweet. Tell your friends to follow. Tell your friends to. Listen to the pod, follow us on Twitch, all that good shit. Everyone that uh, subbed during the stream, I think it was two or three, I appreciate you so much. You guys are badasses, and we will be back um, definitely on Monday and likely before then with me being very angry about uh, no one being on my side for Cake is Bread (laughs) because it fucking is. No, Cake is Bread, you pieces of shit, and I will prove it. I will prove it. I'm on your side. It is Hard being so correct all the time, but someone <laughs> has to do it, and it is me. I oh am my correct. gosh. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's it. Love you guys. Kiss, kiss. See y'all.